This is Arian from EDD Academy, and today we'll be going over differentials, also known as local linearity or linearization. So this is the equation for a differential. It is f of x plus delta x approximately equals f of x plus f prime of x times delta x. So this is used to approximate the result of a function at a non-trivial value. For example, if you wanted to calculate the square root of 1.01, .01, you would use square root x as f of x, you would use 1 as your x, and you would use 0.01 .01 as your delta x, and you would plug in uh, all of those values into your equation here to get, these, to, to get an approximation of the square root of 1.01. .01. So let's take a look of the derivation of this equation, because it's pretty straightforward. So first we have our definition of the derivative, which is f prime of x equals the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x uh, minus f of x over delta x. And what we can do is if we assume that delta x is a very small number, we can take away the limit and say that f prime of x approximately equals uh, uh, f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. Um, and then we can multiply both sides by delta x and subtract f of x to get our, uh, our uh, equation for the differential. And as always, the best way to understand differentials is with practice problems, so let's get right to that. So here we're going to be approximating the value of the square root of 25.05. And the way we always start these types of problems is by defining everything we need to know. So we know that f of x in this case is the square root of x. We know that x is a, uh, is, is a number pretty close to 25.05 that's really easy to put into our function and get an easy answer out. So I'm going to use 25 in this case. And we know that delta x is the value of, our, is, is the value of what's under the square root minus our x. So that is 25.05 minus 25 or 0 0.05. And the first thing we're going to want to do is calculate the derivative of f of x. So f prime of x in this case is pretty straightforward. It's just 1 over 2 square root of x. Now if we call the, if we recall the uh, formula for the differential, it is f of x plus delta x equals f of x plus f prime of x times delta x. And now we have everything we need to plug into this formula. So we can say that the square root of 25.05 equals f of x, which in this case uh, f of x is square root and x is 25. So square root of 25 times f or plus f prime of x, which is 1 over 2 square root of 25 times delta x, which is 0 0.05. So this is just uh, 5 plus 1 over 10 times 0 0.05, or 5.005. And if we actually do take the square root of 25.05, we get 5.004998 which is really close to what we got, which shows the validity of these approximations. Let's move on to another problem. All right, now we're going to approximate the value of sine of 59 degrees. So of course, we start this off by defining our f of x for the differential formula, and this is sine x. Uh, now we're going to look for an x value which is easy to take the sine of and close to 59 degrees. I'm going to use 60 degrees because that's uh, part of the unit circle. And now we want to find our delta x, which is just 59 degrees minus 60 degrees, or negative 1 degree. OK, now I'm going to convert all of these two radians. So 60 degrees is pi over 3 radians. And negative 1 degree is negative pi over 180 radians. OK, now we plug all of this. Uh, in, into our differential, but actually first let's take the derivative of f of x. So f prime of x is going to equal the derivative of sine of x, which is just cosine x. And now that we know that, let's plug all this into our differential. So first of all, sine of pi over 3 uh, plus negative pi over 180 times cosine of pi over 3. 
And from here, uh, let's remember some of our trig. Sine of pi over 3 is just the square root of 3 over 2. And then we're going to be multiplying this, or sorry, subtracting from this, pi over 180 times cosine of pi over 3, which again, if we remember from trig, is just 0 0.5. And if you actually uh, do the math here, plug this into your calculator, you will get uh, roughly 0 0.8573. And if we actually do take the sine of 59 degrees, we get a value of 0 0.857167, which is really close to our value of 0 0.8573. Let's move on to a slightly different topic. So here we have the equation dy equals f prime of x dx. And this is used to estimate the error in measurement. Now, this, this isn't going to make sense to you now, but I promise it will with some practice problems. And the derivation for this is, once more, pretty straightforward. Um, as we know, dy dx equals f prime of x. And if we just multiply dx uh, on both sides, we get our equation at the top here. The radius of a circle grows from 4 to 4.03 feet. Estimate the resulting change in area. So the way we're going to do this is first write out an equation given what we have in the problem. So it's asking us for a change in area, so we're going to write out an equation that gives us the area when we have the radius. So this is, of course, a equals pi r squared. Then we're going to take the derivative of this equation with respect to the radius. So this is dA equals, or dA dr equals 2 pi r. Then we multiply both sides by dr to get dA equals 2 pi r dr. And from here, we have everything we need to solve for dA. It's in the problem. So we know that r equals 4, it's given to us right here, and we know that dr is the change in r, so that is 4.03 minus 4, which is just 0 0.03. Now we can plug all of that into our original equation here to get dA equals 2 pi times 4 times 0 0.03, and this is equal to 0 0.754. And in terms of units, we're looking at area, and therefore it will be feet squared. Here we have a cube with side length 5 centimeters that has a margin of error of 0 0.07 centimeters. And we're going to estimate the margin of error for the volume of this cube. All right, so of course we're going to start by writing the volume of the cube given a side length. So this is v equals l cubed. Then we're going to take the derivative of this equation with respect to l. So we get dv dl equals 3l squared. Then we multiply both sides by dl to get the equation dv equals 3l squared dl. And from here, we're going to plug in uh, everything that we need to solve for dv. So we know that l in this case is 5 centimeters. And dl is going to be the margin of error. But it's important to keep in mind that what margin of error really means is that the side length can be 5 centimeters plus or minus 0 0.07 centimeters. So dl is going to be plus or minus 0 0.07. Uh, and now we can plug all of this in to our original equation to get dv equals 3 times 5 squared times plus or minus 0 0.07. And this will give us uh, plus or minus 5.25. And in terms of units, we're going to be looking at centimeters cubed, of course. 